Alrighty there, friends. Hello, hello, hello. How are you today? Um, thank you, as always, very much for joining me. I will be your host, Ramadi, for today. Uh, and um, before we get started here, I, I have to apologize to you guys. I'm a little under the weather, so I'm sorry for the uh, <clears throat> uncharacteristic voicing that's going to go on here. Um, really excited. I, I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait for a little while for myself to feel better. Um, so this is going to be part one of a three-parter, and it's going to be a 75 subscriber special, um, something that I have wanted to do for quite a long time, and finally have gotten it done. So I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, of course, I, I am extremely humbled that um, 75 people find me um, good enough to watch on YouTube. I, I Thank you very much. I, I, I really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun to do these videos, um, so I'm glad that um, so many people find them worth uh, worth watching. So, anyhow, um, yeah. So I have wanted to build a clock for quite a long time, and um, not just any clock. I have wanted to build a replica of the Minecraft clock, which I have in my hand here. So, um, yeah, we are going to do that. And before we get started here, we need to do um, a little bit of math, which I have on those signs. And then uh, I also have the tools that we are going to use um, laid out here. So uh, here we go. So a day cycle is 20 minutes. I have timed it. Um, I know that there's a lot of conflicting information. It is currently, as of 1.7.4, a 20-minute cycle. That breaks down like this, 10 minutes of day, 7 minutes of night. And then I've time the dawn and dusk periods at a minute and a half or 90 seconds each so um, you can kind of do with what you want but there's a very definitive change in the sky and that's why I have timed on dusk separately um, so a clock face that we're gonna build is gonna have then 20 segments and I arrived at that number 20 from 20 minutes of time I thought it would just be very simple to have each segment time out at one minute uh, and unfortunately that is not quite what the Minecraft clock does, um, but that's how we are going to do it anyway. And then down here, um, since we have 20 segments, each segment lasting 20 minutes, I needed to get the number of ticks for one minute, which is going to be 600 a second is 10 ticks. One minute of 60 seconds times um, 10 ticks is going to give me 600 ticks per minute. Um, and it turns out that that number is actually not very nice because hoppers move items uh, at four ticks and then uh, so we need a multiple of four so that we can divide that 600 up because I, I really didn't want to sit here and build a chain of 150 hoppers. Um, I thought that that would be a little silly to do. Uh, I suppose you can, uh, but for me at five pieces of iron a hopper times 150 hoppers times 150 chests I felt that was a little too expensive so um, so we need a multiple of four and the only pseudo nice combo is 40 by 15 and um, so that would be 40 ticks of movement times um, 15 revolutions and uh, so that turns out to be a 10 hopper versus 150 hopper. I felt like that was much more manageable. And then we need a 15, di uh, a 15, um, sorry, a counter that'll run to 15. So these will be the tools of the trade here for today. Um, we are going to have this guy, which is just a binary counter. So this is a, a two-digit binary counter. Um, this is my very favorite of all time. Um, RS Norlatch, where I have forgotten this torch that goes right there. So now it'll actually run. There we go. Very favorite Norlatch. And then this here is just a um, hopper timer, hopper clock. So it just runs around in a circle. Pretty simple. Um, I don't know if I put an item in there or not, but I guess it doesn't matter. So we're going to use these three things. We're going to combine them together, and we are going to make um, a 600 tick timer with these items and um, yeah so we'll come back and we'll do that right then so um, we need a timer uh, a clock to run our clock if you will so we're gonna start with a little red wool in um, this by two pattern here so there's three four five six and seven so just seven by two is what we want 
And now here on this corner, we're going to stick a little piece of green wool. That's only so that we can build our hopper clock. So now hopper into that green wool. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So all of those guys just chain together. And now we can cut out our green wool and chain the last one. And now if we grab our comparator uh, and now a repeater, now we have our reed. And any old block, I'm just going to grab some planks, will do just fine. So we'll put them in the hoppers and just make sure that we have strung everything, which we have. Nice. So to finish the output from our uh, little 40 tick clock here, we need redstone, 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 um, like that. And now we want a repeater facing out, repeater facing in, repeater facing in. So those are going to be to three separate uh, counters. And now there will be a last, um, there will be a last line that's going to run out this direction. Um, but I'm not going to worry about him just now because he is kind of special. So uh, yeah. Uh, so let's get some green wool then right here so not directly in front of that uh, repeater here on the corner but one away and now I'm gonna get a little black wool too black wool goes on the edge of that repeater and now on both of these guys here we're gonna do black wool and black wool and now for each of those we're gonna go up three one two three one two three and now cut the middle two out just like that get uh, some sticky pistons facing down down and down and now eventually we are going to have um, black wool here and now same concept up to and put the piston so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these um, to basically select different parts of the counter um, so to get to 15 um, which is kind of a pain you couldn't just build a single 16, you know, a, a 16, a binary counter that runs out to 16. We're going to have to get a little more creative than that. So um, back here to our lime green then. So we're going to run the big digit, the big counter first. Um, so he's going to be uh, an 8-bit binary counter. And to do that, we're going to have the lime green will be placed. This will be the pulse limiter here. And now we're going to have the ones digit the twos digit, the fours digit, and then this should be your output. And now each of these areas here, we're going to put a sticky piston facing up. And on top of each of those, we're just going to put some lime wool like that. And now this guy here is going to be, um, and I'm actually going to turn our um, clock off so he's not trying to run this thing while we're at it redstone dust right here so that this repeater whenever this black wool is down is going to go ahead and power that redstone and now after that we need repeater 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 and now the last one is going to be on four ticks of delay so full delay here uh, and again so this one here is your pulse limit one digit two digit four digit and uh, there I do have a tutorial on binary counters if you don't understand what that means it's fine um, go watch that so basically this is going to count to 8 right here and um, so that's 8 of our 15 done and so now the next guy we're going to build is going to go right here and he's going to look very similar except this time we're going to have a 1's digit and a 2's digit and then this is our pulse limiter and so same idea here redstone repeater repeater last repeater on full delay and then on top of the pistons we need blocks um, so that's 8 plus 4 is 12 digits done. And now this one here, as you guessed, is just going to be a single 2-bit counter. Uh, and now we'll do repeater. Last one out there, full delay again, repeater, this guy, redstone right here. And now block and block. So now we've got 8 plus 4 plus 2, which is 14. And now that's why I told you that this guy right here was going to be a special a special case because he does not need to count. He just needs to be um, cycled through once. And that is pretty easy to do. So we're not going to worry about him. Um, so um, 
yeah, this is all of our uh, counters then pretty much done. And um, a little bit of redstone right there on top of those two hoppers. And be very careful. I, you purposely build this guy so it cycles outside first so that when it's sending a signal, which is going to be delayed um, by basically two ticks to get here, um, you know, you're only going to have moved from this hopper to that hopper in the time that that signal travels. So it's, it's not going to interfere with your clock. Um, so just, you know, something to be aware of, something to be careful with there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to grab a button and um, we're going to cycle all of these guys just once to make sure we haven't built. And there they go. So here's all the blocks that are then going to be counted and these are just the pulse limit blocks right here. Um, and so the piston spitting the blocks out is a good thing. This is what's going to be kind of your default, your null state. Um, everything right here is off, which is the way we want it. So um, yeah, we're going to come back and we are going to now uh, build the Norlatch controls for what's going to run these pistons up here. Righto, guys. Okay, so um, time for the blue circuit, the Norlatch control for the pistons up here. Um, so the red, you know, just uh, output from the hopper clock. Anything green then associated with um, the binary counters. So back here off of the repeaters on full delay, we need to have uh, some blue blocks and now torches on the side. And now all we're going to do is, is um, carry the signal up off of those torches like this with another torch on top so that this guy and this guy here with the repeater are going to be the same. Now from here um, we're going to build the same nor latch for all three of them so I'm just going to do one first so that it hopefully makes sense for you. Um, so we'll have blocks on top and now here off to the side um, we want another block on all three of them so this is what your starting point is going to look like. And then on top of this guy, a little bit of redstone. He's going to be the beginning of the nor latch that hopefully you're going to recognize. So block here, repeater on the side so we can avoid what this block is doing. And then here, another block kind of floating, torch on the side of him, also redstone on the top. And now uh, off of this redstone, we need a block on the side and a torch on the top. And now hopefully you recognize this as our uh, nor latch. So if I break our redstone, I'll go ahead and just flip around back and forth. Uh, and then to finish it off, we're going to put another block with a torch like that. Now this circuit right here is a little different just because he's longer. Um, but I'm going to do both of these here at the same time just because they are identical to what we just did and they are a little shorter to do as well in terms of the actual output to the pistons so hopefully this will all make sense and then while I'm doing this whoops while I'm doing this I will um, let you guys know that um, down here at the bottom we used a full delay on this so that it would affect the carrying of the signal upwards on those torches. What arrives to him is only a single tick pulse and so we need to elongate that a little bit in order to affect these torches. I've done it on full delay just because I expect uh, when I build this in a survival setting it's going to be within multiplayer so I'm going to have some lag and I want to make sure that this signal gets carried up and then carried into the nor latches here. So again here on the backs of these guys we need to have blocks and torches. So this is that kind of done. Now um, we want to put a block like this with redstone on top so it's being powered from that torch right there. And now on the side of that guy we want uh, another block like this. And now torch, torch. And so we've now run those two pistons and so they will now be controlled by that nor latch back there. And now, as promised, um, this guy is a little different, so we're going to put a block here on top. Go out, two, three. Redstone right there. Uh, repeater, repeater. And now, torch here on the side. So now we have run all three of those, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, 
so yeah, I think we can um, do the pink line next, and that's just going to be the kind of movement, and I'll describe that to you uh, as we go. Okay, then, uh, pink line. So pretty much what we need is these things to add. So when we get to 8, it needs to go over here to 9, and then after we get to 12, it needs to go over here to 13. And to do that, when this block is down, these others need to be retracted. And then as soon as we hit 8, this block has to get pulled up and that one pushed down. And the pink line is kind of going to control some of that action by resetting um, the NOR latches. It's going to kind of power the next NOR latch the way it needs to be powered to then flip that and toggle it over. Uh, and we're going to achieve that by coming down here. So we're back here at the back. And we're going to put a torch right here on the side of each of those three blocks. So we have a torch going up here, and there's also a torch leading out here. And now you're going to notice that our pink block is going to go on top, and that we're going to have an alternate torch or an alternate signal. So this one is turned off for up top, where this one's going to be turned on. Because um, anytime we're in this state, we need that one to go down. So uh, pink block right there on the front of him. And now we're going to go out to 1 and 2. Um, repeater. So this guy is getting power. So we're going to use a repeater to pull that power. And then a piece of redstone right there. And now on the front of that redstone is another pink block. And now you'll notice that um, this is the invert to that, which is the other side of the NOR latch. So if we go ahead and throw a torch on that guy, then any time um, he lights up, he's going to go ahead and invert the NOR latch for us. So we're just going to do that pretty much three times in succession. So one, two, three, repeat, whoops, repeater, redstone, and now on the side of that guy, pink block. And now if we come over here, torch, and now we've got one more to build. So pink, 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 repeater, redstone, uh, here on the side of that guy, torch. And now you can kind of see what I have staged. I've been telling you that this guy here is kind of different. He is a different line. And he is a different line because we only need him to be a NOR latch, which actually makes it pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to build him real quick for you. Whoops, not a comparator. Redstone there. And now here torch. So this is the last of our latches pretty much done and now he's gonna have exactly the same control so we're just gonna do this right here bring him over redstone and now we'll grab him. So uh, pink guy pretty easy and we built our last little line here uh, so what's left to do is to run our signal to him and then we also need to run our orange um, reset line for anything. So we'll do that uh, right now. Okay, guys um, and gals, before we get um, started on the orange line, I told you something on the pink that is incorrect. So I'm going to need you to go and find that bit of redstone that we left on top of the pink block down there. You need to break him and replace it with a... Um, repeater so that it doesn't cross talk because uh, if you have redstone there it, it tends to power that piston there in the middle and that's uh, not a good thing so you got to go replace that guy so um, as you can see I extended all of the pistons down and I did that just so we can go through and kind of reset everything so you'll really understand hopefully what's going on but first we're gonna talk about this line right here we're gonna complete him first so, um, obviously, repeater into the block, redstone, repeater, and now redstone out a little bit. Our goal is to get to this guy, so we are just going to build um, kind of that diagonal pattern like we've been contain uh, continuing it up. Torch here on the side, torch there, so that when he powers, then he will flip that latch around. And now from here, I'm just going to put a repeater into that just for a measure of control. 
And now my very favorite part is the uh, orange line right here. So we're going to do block, block, and now block. Uh, and this repeater is here so that does not crosstalk with this repeater right there. And now just a piece of redstone so that when this line runs, it's going to go ahead and flip this latch to retract the piston. And now we're going to carry the orange signal. And what the orange signal is going to do is it's going to extend this piston right here. But to do that, we need to get to this bit of redstone. Um, and you'll see that if I invert this guy around, this is going to be his normal setting for this stage. And I'm going to go ahead and flip all of these, actually. Um, so we need to power that guy. And to power him, we are going to do a block here. And we're going to do a block there. Repeater. I'm sorry. Torch. Torch. And uh, so when this torch flips on, that guy will power and it'll extend down there. Now to get there is a little convoluted. Um, hopefully you follow along okay. Two blocks off of the side. Repeaters on single tick delay into both of those. And now this neat property of repeaters is that they will take a signal that travels down that way. And now you saw that this piece here kind of cross-talked. So we need a block on top to stop that from happening. Now to reach that piece of redstone in the rest of the circuit, we go two blocks just like this. Repeater here, redstone dust. And now repeaters on the top of these blue blocks here so that they take power from that torch. And now to finish the guy off, block and block. And as you'll see, we are now um, kind of set here. I need to go manually reset this piston real fast and um, now we should be good to do a trial so let's watch as it'll extend everything out and that moves it over I purposely had those down so we weren't waiting a whole long time now this guy should go right now and move it over which he did and now this is only going to count two so one well he was down so that's fine so now this is going to be our reset, and as I told you, this cross talked just a little bit, but it's fine because it happens in between the pulses. And now we're back to counting over here. So this is two, and now we'll go to three, and then the next one is going to grab him and be four. Yeah, so we have eight plus four plus two plus one for a total of 15, and they will count 15 times 40 ticks. And we're going to watch him here real fast, because he's about to go and flip us over to the fours digits. Just like that. So, yeah, there is the timer for our um, clock face done. I think reasonably compact. I'm pretty happy with how this ended out. Maybe a little taller um, than I'd really like, but I think it's 8 by 12 by 5. And for a um, 600 tick counter, I think that's reasonably nice. There is an argument that you could do it with just 150 hoppers and probably just cram it all in and make it go uh, in a smaller area than this, but um, too expensive for me. I would rather do this right here. So, so yeah, there's part one done. Uh, part two, we're going to come back. We're going to actually build the clock face, and then I'll show you the mechanism for how we're going to wire this um, timer into the clock face. So I will see you there.